We're here at Copper State in Casa Grande, Arizona. We're about an hour south of Phoenix in what I think is the 43rd running of this event here. I'm Dan Johnson. We're going to talk with Greg Hobbs. Greg, welcome to Casa Grande once again. You've been here before, I hear. Yeah, I have been here a few times. All right. Uh, probably the last 12 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So you're an old hand at this. We're, yes. the, we're kind of new here. I've been here several times, but not in any of those years. So it's been a while. It's good to be back. So we are sitting in front of a handsome airplane, which you helped to represent. This is the Arian Aircraft Lightning, and this I think may be the LS-1, but there's also kits. So tell me a little bit about your relationship with the company. First of all, do you help them at other shows, Greg? Yes, I do. Uh, we work together on all the national shows, uh, the two in Florida, Sebring and Sun and Fun, and then Oshkosh in Wisconsin. Okay, great. And now you're uh, sort of soloing out here. Well, not really. You got a pretty good staff of people, and you got three of these beautiful airplanes out here with you. Yes, uh, we we do quite a few shows throughout the western states, and we we try to, to just increase the market share in the west. Excellent. So, Greg, I want to ask you: when you go to all these shows that you do, and your support for air and aircraft. When people walk up and they see the lightning, what's their first impression? Their first impression is it's the Lance Air. And it looks a lot like a Lance Air, but when I talk about a 38 mile an hour touchdown speed, uh, they realize that it's something different than a Lance Air, but then it has good climb and, and uh, cruise uh, speed so that uh, they realize that it is a pretty good cross country airplane. And when you compare it to general aviation, say a 180 horsepower plant in a Cessna or a Piper, uh, it's like a, driving a pickup truck or a one-ton truck and getting in a Corvette. <laughs> that's sort of a good comparison. That is a good comparison. <laughs> well, you know, comparing this to a Lancer, that's, that's not a negative thing at all. That's a positive thing. They make a very beautiful airplane and very fast, but they're a little bit more to handle, aren't they? They are. They, uh, they require a lot higher uh, approach speeds and touchdown speeds, right. which requires you to be on top of your game. So let me ask you those couple of numbers again here, and you'll see where I'm going in a minute. What's the stall speed of this airplane uh, at, at best? Flaps down, power off? About 38 miles per hour in that 32 mi knot range, somewhere right in there, okay. depending on the each airplane. But so let's close. do 32 knots. First of all, that's very slow for any aircraft in the category. What's the top speed of the airplane? Top speed probably in the uh, 180, 180 to 190 full throttle. Now that's yeah. and, and to get those numbers, and I know it is capable of that, but that's not an LSA then, is no, it? No, no. Uh, most of the airplanes we build are experimental that are uh, sport compliant, and then uh, those airplanes are all capable of much higher speeds. The, the owner just has to tune them down. Right. And how do they do that? They tune them down mostly by limiting the RPM and then putting a little drag in them, drop the flaps a quarter inch or so, and it fits right into the sport class. They also have to limit the gross slope to 1320. Sure. They can because the airplane design is capable of more than that. It is. How much more? When it's an experimental? With, with, a, with an experimental with a Jabiru power plant, 1550. Okay. So yeah. actually quite a bit more weight it's capable of carrying and it can't scoot right along, but even in the LSA numbers, 38 knots, or 32 knots, you said, to 120 knots, that's right at four times, and that's kind of the holy grail of design. If you can get to four times stall to max, you've really done something, and so clearly they've done something when it's the same stall and 180, and that's miles an hour, I'm guessing. That's, that's miles an hour. Miles an hour, so that'd be about 150, 150 knots or so. So now you're at five times, I mean, that's, beyond the Holy Grail, so they have really done a job with this design. Do you know how many of these are flying? Or Ballpark 180 kits that have been produced, and there's probably 160 of them that's been in the air. Is that right? Yes. It'll take uh, about a year and a half working in your spare time to complete a Lightning. I've had several builders who have done that. You know, when they come to us, and we do probably 80% of our airplanes at our build center. Uh, anybody, uh, skill level wise, can build one uh, as long as they got somebody to help them along through some of the more difficult parts. If somebody's going to build a kit 
put a Jabiru six-cylinder, 120 horse engine, that's the 3300 model, and, and typical instruments and typical paint, you know, all that kind of stuff. What would somebody spend from kit to finish, approximately? Building on their own or with well, build give it, center give it, fees? Well, give it to me both ways. Okay, build center fees are, and everything, paint interior, everything ready to go, they're going to end up with about a 97 to 103, depending if they have autopilots and glass cockpit sure, and sure. what backup stuff that they Okay, select. if they do it on their own. If they do it on their own, um, they could build this airplane for about 80000 Okay. Yeah. But tell me about, let's go inside the airplane mentally. How, how big is it? It's it's 42 inches wide and it has ample headroom in that we we got guys that are six foot four, six foot five. Is and they're pretty okay. beefy guys and they fit in them pretty well. Well, that's wider than a Cessna 172 by several inches. And uh, anything special that somebody has to learn to do to fly the airplane? I, I, I tell people it's a numbers airplane. You fly the numbers. What do you, what do you approach at? Like, uh, give us some of those okay, numbers. Okay, uh, if I'm uh, approaching to any airport, I'm going to approach it at 65 miles per hour. And short final, I'll bleed it back to 60 if it's a short field, over the fence at 55. And, and then I'm, I'm, I can get in and out of 1,600 feet. Uh, if uh, if it's a standard airport, then you just you know you you let that airplane float as you go, and you just keep it from landing, and it'll land itself when it's ready, and it'll be a squeaker if you do that every time. All right. Well, let's uh, get some more information from you in the form of a web address where people can find you and the company. And do you have different website addresses? Yes, we do. Yeah. So tell me yours first. My my website is lightningaircraftwest.net. Okay, and, and what's the factory? The factory is flylightning.net. Okay, so there's both of those. Uh, lots more about the Lightning and all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining Greg Hobbs and myself here at Copper State.